Hello. Have you ever encountered this type of lifting? The cargo lifting point is constructed with a trunnion for lifting purposes, particularly at the tailing side of the cargo. What is the difference in load between trunnion and lifting lug for a tailing crane? In this video, I will outline the important things to remember during the planning stage. These are things you should remember. The primary reason for knowing the load is safety. Cranes are designed to lift loads within specific weight limits. Exceeding these limits can lead to crane failure, structural damage, or even accidents causing injuries or fatalities. By knowing the load, crane operators can ensure that they are operating within safe limits. Do you know the importance of using a longer sling on the tailing side, when the cargo lifting point is made up of a trunnion? It is important to use a longer sling on the tailing side, when raising a cargo with a trunnion lifting point, this is to prevent the spreader bar from colliding with the cargo during the process of turning it to a vertical position. At a specific angle of the cargo, when using a shorter sling, the spreader beam will come into contact with cargo that potential damage into it, or worst case scenario cause an accident. Next. When utilizing a longer sling, ensure that the hook block has sufficient clearance from the top of the boom. Always use a longer boom to prevent this issue and also consider the pickup height of the cargo. Raise the cargo from its support or trailer, ensuring you have enough clearance from the hook block while hoisting. Always verify the minimum clearance between the hook block and the tip of the boom. Each hook block has different clearance requirements. Next. The positioning of the tailing crane influences this factor. When lowering the boom during tandem lifting, it is crucial to ensure that the boom angle does not exceed the permissible degree, and that the capacity at maximum reach is not exceeded. Here is another important thing that you should not overlook, especially if the trunnion size is larger. Always verify the trunnion detail, confirm the compatible sling diameter, and assess the length of the sling eye. We typically use a grommet when dealing with a trunnion. In this example, a 6 meter sling length is utilized. The exact length of the sling is not the only factor to consider when determining the sling height. We need to consider half of the circumference of the trunnion. The sling is bending at the trunnion the halfway point, resulting a reduction in sling height. Here is the calculation to determine half of the trunnion circumference. Based in this calculation, we can determine how much we need to reduce in the sling overall length due to bending of the sling into trunnion. Calculate the actual overall height of the sling by subtracting half of the circumference length from the rigging length. The 6 meter rigging height has been reduced to 4.744 meters. In this scenario, the spreader bar comes into contact on top of the cargo. Always remember this so that you avoid any mistakes in your planning. Let's return to our primary topics. As shown in the slide, we are utilizing two cranes for tandem lifting for reorienting the cargo from horizontal to vertical. Assume the tailing crane is parked at this location and you must reach the maximum radius until the cargo becomes vertical. The tailing crane has a minimum radius of 10 meters and a maximum radius of 30 meters. Let's determine the load on the tailing crane base in two scenarios, one utilizing a trunnion for cargo and the other using a lifting lug. This is the load chart for the tailing crane that we will use for reference and calculation. Now, determine the load on the main crane and tailing crane based on the provided dimensions. In this instance, the cargo's center of gravity is not positioned at the center. The distance from the main crane lifting point is 6 meters, and for the tailing crane lifting point is 8 meters. The vertical distance from the center of gravity of the cargo to the lifting lug is 1.2 meters. This computation refers to trunnion type tailings. Start calculating the load on each crane when the cargo is in a horizontal position or at a zero degree angle. Please note this formula and have your calculator ready to follow along with my calculations. Next, calculate the load for lifting lug type tailings. 
This is the same result for trunnion type tailings, since the load is only at zero degree angle. Now, let us calculate the total load and crane capacity for tailing crane during initial pickup of the cargo. Let us consider the weight of the hook block and rigging weight. The crane's capacity at a 10 meter radius, as indicated on the load chart, is 44.5 tons. The total load is 24.98 tons. The crane has a safety factor of 1.7 and a utilization rate of 56.13%. During the initial hoisting, we can confirm that our crane has a sufficient capacity to lift the cargo. Here are the most important factors you need to consider. Let's assume the cargo is already tilted at a 50 degree angle. Let's begin calculating the loading difference between the main crane and the tailing crane. When utilizing lifting lugs and trunnions for a tailing point. Let's begin calculating the load utilizing a lifting lug at the tailing point. The load is shifting for the main crane and tailing crane due to cargo tilt. Calculate the distance between the main lifting point and tailing point using the provided formula when the cargo is tilted at a specific angle. Once you get the value for DA and DB, you can now start to calculate the loading in each lifting point. According to calculations, the load for the main crane at a 50 degree cargo tilt is 30.55 tons, and for the tailing crane, it is 19.44 tons. Now, let us do the calculation for trunnion type lifting point. We will using the same formula that we used in lifting lug type. The only difference is the value for D3 is zero, since the cargo center of gravity and trunnion is in the same line. Once you get the value for DA and DB, you can now start to calculate the loading in each lifting point. According to calculations, the load for the main crane at a 50 degree cargo tilt is 28.57 tons, and for the tailing crane, it is 21.43 tons. Let us compare the load when the cargo is at a zero degree angle versus when it begins to tilt. This is for the lifting lug type lifting point. When the cargo begins to tilt, the load begins to decrease at the tailing crane, while the main crane takes up more load. In this situation, the load in the tailing crane at 70 to 85 degree tilt has already been reduced. Now, let us compare the load when the cargo is at a zero degree angle versus when it begins to tilt. This is for the trunnion type lifting point. When the cargo begins to tilt, the load remain the same at the tailing crane and main crane meaning the load is not reducing at any angle of the cargo. This is because the lifting point is in line with the center of the gravity. This is the sample spreadsheet I made to calculate the load for main crane and tailing crane during tandem lifting. You can see in the example, the load for tailing crane and main crane is not changing during tandem lifting when using trunnion type lifting point. The load will change only when cargo is around more than 85 to 90 degree. Now, let us start to calculate the load and crane capacity for tailing crane during lifting at maximum radius. 
the crane's capacity at a 30 meter radius, as indicated on the load chart, is 19.5 tons. The total load is 24.98 tons even the cargo is tilted. The crane has a safety factor of 0.78 and a utilization rate of 128%. During the maximum radius, the crane is already overloading. This is the importance of knowing the load, to avoid any mistake in your planning. Here in this example, I consider the main crane is already fixed at its radius due to capacity and only you can play to make the cargo vertical is tailing crane. This is for example purpose only.